This is an introduction to Globalizer, a product to detect and fix ITN issues in your code. We are on the globalizer.com welcome page here. I'm going to log in as myself, Olivia at Lingoport.com. Uh, in the company Lingoport, I am a manager, and in here I have my rule sets, my team rule sets. I can create a new rule set. There is Globalizer help that I invite you to check out and a number of other items. The most important part here are rule sets. Rule sets are the logic which embody the how to scan your code to find ITN issues, internationalization issues. I have created here a tutorial Java rule set. I'm just going to create very briefly a C-sharp rule set. Here is a new rule set. I give it a name, tutorial, tutorial C-sharp, for instance. It's of the language C sharp. There are a number of other languages to choose from. I want to share it with other members of my team. Creating, clicking the create button is going to instantiate uh, the tutorial C sharp based on a default setting, default configuration, if you want, of the C sharp rule set. Rule sets have source file extensions. By default, extensions for C sharp have that form. You can add a new file extension or you can remove others if uh, it doesn't correspond to your specifics. And the scan rules themselves are going to be divided into four different categories. Embedded strings, which says for a string in the code, I want to that, that string not to be inside the code, but I want it to be externalized so that a localization group can translate that embedded strings. Local sensitive methods, which may behave differently based on the market that it's running on. General patterns, like a hard-coded daytime and static file references. For instance, a picture or an image or a video or a WAV file that's in French instead of being in Chinese, for instance. For each one of them, there are detection rules. Uh, for instance, an embedded string detection rule will say, when I have that rule, I want that particular string to be placed in my active item and issues. And I have filtering rules, things that should not be placed in the active, if you want, list of item and issues. For embedded strings, there are string literal filters, method filters, string line filters, and the same with locale sensitive methods. You have a way to configure a specific line filter or a specific filter uh, for those items. I've just created a new C-sharp rule. If I go back to my rule set, I have now a tutorial C-sharp and a tutorial Java rule set. This happens on the server. Those rule sets are now accessible to many developers who have the Globalizer client. Here is a look at the Globalizer client. It looks at code that is on my directories. It's not on the server. It's really on my C drive in that instance. The code itself has that kind of a format. That is probably uh, a module, an application, a library, any kind of ways that you have devised your layout of the code here. For this project, I'm just gonna show very briefly how I've laid it out by clicking that property file. The project name is tutorial, and I have a JavaScan. That JavaScan uses the tutorial Java rule set that happens to live on the server here. And I'm going after all the elements of the source. I could check this guy and say only I want the C locale part of my structure to be scanned. In that instance, I'm saying I want everything to be scanned. I'm going to apply, close this guy, and I'm going to run a scan. So here, the developer, it's a developer's tool uh, who is specialized in ITNN, has a number of ITNN menu items at the top, a toolbar right here, in that toolbar, there is single scan, which is really important. Then there is a scan source tree that says, your code looks like this on disk. The scan results are going to appear here. And for each one of the scans that I'm launching, there is that drop down here. The results are organized based on the four categories that we've seen, embedded strings, local sensitive method, general patterns, and status, static file references and based on also the status that we want to 
view in the scan results, the active or other statuses such as invalid, ignore, resolve, or to do, which are set by the user, or filtered, which is uh, status set by the globalizer rules themselves. Uh, the source files will appear here, and we're going to talk very quickly on, uh, very briefly, we're going to see the quick summary. I'm going to click scan based on the properties of the project, which is I want to scan, I want to have the Java scan using a tutorial Java rule set uh, that I'm retrieving from the server. I'm scanning the code that's on my particular C drive here. And now I have all those issues. They are ranked here by priority. The most important one, one, are probably here. Those are probably strings, like this string, for instance. Uh, it doesn't look too good, right? Order student, Jurevik, Helsinki, Hello Francois, all those guys, they may be items that need to be externalized as opposed to be put directly hard coded in the code. I'm going to show you what that string looks like, for example, string hello string. If I have that particular guy here, then maybe it's totally hard coded and we do not want to have that hard coded string within the code. We want to have it externalized in a resource bundle, for instance. So here, it says which file, encoding.java, which line number, 73, and you notice that if I click here, it's going to be 73 here, which, what is the issue, hello Francois, it's a string, and the line of the code, in other words, that line appears here. This is where most of the work will happen for you guys. Quick summary gives you an overview of the, of the issues here. Uh, what is the name of the scan, the rule set that was used, the language it's going after in terms of programming languages, and you can have many different scans uh, going after the same type of directories. How many lines were scanned, how many files were scanned, uh, the number of embedded strings that we are finding here, 65, the locale sensitive methods, and a tidbit about locale sensitive methods, if I click on one of those hyperlinks here, it will guide the developer in solving, in suggesting a solution for that ITNN issue. So it gives an entire introduction to ITNN methods, the ITNN issues specific here to that development. And in an example, replacing that code by code that looks like this. It's still a software engineer who has to make the decisions in terms of the replacement or not of different items. So what we have here is a central control for ITNN issues. Let's go through some of the items that one could do. Let's go first through the fives. Uh, let's say that uh, some of those fives here, this OK cancel, admin, let's say that those are programmatic kind of uh, strings. So they're not really strings that are going to be shown to the user. What I can do is very simply say ignore those. I'm going to click ignore and it's going to join the ranks of the ignore statuses. So here I'm going to say show me only the ignore items and that ignore item that I just put here is going to appear here. I could say show me the active and the ignores of course and it would show the active and the ignore here. It's ranked by priority. It could be ranked by the file names in which instance that ignore is part of swing exercise at line 211. Uh, another way to deal with, uh, with uh, strings in that instance is to say, I want to ignore it, but this time I want to ignore it in the code. So I'm going to say, uh, this particular one here, I want the code to remember not my globalizer project, but I want the, in the code to tag it to say this is not a, a locale dependent kind of string. I'm going to say ignore this line. And now I'm tagging that line with this particular comment here that says globalizer ignore this in the next scan. But now all my developers have access to that code once I put, push that back into a source repository for instance. Another way I may want to deal with it is to say, let's externalize strings. In that instance, let's externalize this. I could externalize strings in a batch mode. In other words, selecting them either via searching on a pattern or identifying many of them and choosing a shift. In that instance, I'm just going to externalize one string. 
this particular one. I'm going to say I want this string to be put in a resource bundle based on my project property. I click here and now I get this get string which is my method to get at the string based on an identifier that I have created, generated in Globalizer. In other words, my file decomposition.java has been modified uh, in the resource bundle that corresponds to my settings, I now have this ID which has the string uh, which was there before. So one, I one idea is very simply to say uh, let's modify the code either via the, the code itself or by adding a tag that says ignore this. Another possibility is to say change the status and finally, a third possibility is to say, let's modify the rules themselves. I'm going to go back to the rule sets and you will notice in my rules that I have in the Java rule sets, I have configured a string literal filter. That string literal filter is for the tutorial specifically. Uh, the tutorial here says, if I have the word us so this is a regular expression backslash b saying this is a word boundary if i have the word us i'm going to filter it out i'm i've just unchecked that box uh, meaning i don't want this to be active anymore i'm going to be down here i'm going to rerun that scan and now uh, those items that have us in them will appear as part of uh, the res the active the red notions here. I'm going to find them here. I'm going to just find that US string, find them all, and here they are. I'm going to go back just to show how that is really done here. I'm going to go back to the Java tutorial and in order to configure my rules, really this particular guy here, the tutorial rules, I'm going to click on here. When you, when you click create it, you will have that interface you fill in tutorial rule set, you fill in US, you give a description, and you say, yeah, that's that's what I want to be filtered next time, and I'm going to activate this by just clicking this guy. And actually, when you create it, it's active by default. I'm done here. I'm going back. I'm going to rerun the Java scan like this. And now I'm trying to find in those same scan results I'm going to find, trying to find that particular string. Well, it's not the word US that's there, right? It's not the string US. There is nothing left here. However, if I look in the status for the filtered strings, and I'm going to only show filtered strings now, in other words, things that I've told the rule set to filter out, I'm going to search for those same items. They now are here. You notice that US string is right here. So we've seen all three ways of dealing with, uh, with a, an ITN issue. We've scanned the code based on the, the rules that exist on the server on this side here. And those rules can be used by many developers. That's, what, that's why we have a server here. And there are many features in terms of the, in terms of, uh, the globalizer that will be shown in subsequent tutorials.